Hey folks, I wanted to give you the quick update on the Comet 3i Atlas. I was able to take pictures using this setup. So this is RASA 11 telescope from Celestron and you are seeing the mount in the bottom which is the Skywatcher Wave 150i. It's a harmonic mount and I did set up that with some counterweights. It has the RA and deck clutches to release so you can actually balance the mount very well. And in the morning, uh, literally just behind this area right here, is going to be like 5.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. I think it is slowly moving up so we can actually start seeing it earlier and earlier in the morning. So around 5.30 uh, this morning, I was able to point this telescope towards that region. It is right above Venus. And I pointed the telescope and I tried to take a picture uh, actually, the first thing I did was I tried to plate solve it. When I point the telescope, telescope should know where it is, which is called plate solving. And it knows the coordinates where the comet is. And I tried to do that. It's way too bright. So I have to reduce the exposure time down to like one second to get stars into the camera. And I was able to resolve the problem with the plate solving. Now it knows where it is and it is pointing towards the Comet 3A Atlas. I took 30 seconds exposure because I thought that would be the best I can do because otherwise the, the picture is going to blow up. Actually it worked out very well. I was able to take like seven or eight pictures and after that it's way too bright. So within a matter of like five minutes I was able to see brightness coming out from the sun and I can no longer take pictures. It just, they are too bright. So I'm going to show you guys that picture. Just very quick uh, rundown on this configuration here. So this is RAS 11. This is QHY367C. It's a one shot color camera. Inside it got a IR UV cut filter. The guide scope on the back is the ZWO, the mini guide scope. Um, and also on the top, there is a, a B-Link PC and that requires a video by itself. It's working amazingly well, okay? So that is a remote setup for me, like it's in my backyard. So I can go inside the house, connect into this uh, Windows PC. I can quickly take pictures, do whatever I need. So I don't need to leave my laptop here. But that B-Link is also expensive. It's not cheap. But it's a very, very good one. I really liked it. All the USBs, the HDMIs, it's fantastic. I'm going to show you guys the pictures of the 3i Atlas. It's not much, so don't expect 3i Atlas kind of level of comet. It's like a tiny dot, but it is still worth it. I was able to get pictures. It is magnitude 14, okay? so. At a magnitude 7, you will just see a tiny streak uh, if you take 2 minutes exposure, okay? Magnitude 14 is like really, really faint. You cannot see that with naked eye. You cannot see with the binoculars. You have to use at least 8 inch or more telescopes and you need long exposures with the cameras in order to take pictures. You cannot take pictures with the cell phone. It's not that bright. And it's very small unless you have a fantastic way to resolve it and you are an astrophotographer yourself. It's difficult. At this moment, it is difficult. It might get maybe a little brighter, maybe in December and January, maybe we can take some pictures. But everyone is way super excited to see like how it looks, including myself. So I do wanted to see it. There is an interesting thing that I noticed when I was looking at the pictures. I'm going to share that with you. Give me one second. Uh, by the way, if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe to my channel. Click on the notifications. I show the live pictures live. So I'll go live as often as I can in the night time or in the morning time, like early hours. Um, 
So please subscribe to that. I'll post more videos on the uh, comet 3A Atlas and other comets and other astronomy stuff. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, watching and thank you for subscribing. Thank you. So there is a website out there called the skylive.com and you should be able to go to that website to find the location of the comet for a telescope, not for uh, regular use. Right, it provides the coordinates uh, for the comet. These are the celestial coordinates. You can think of a celestial sphere and a coordinate. It is similar to GPS, the latitude and the longitude we have. On the celestial sphere, which is a imaginary sphere around the Earth. So these are the coordinates. The right ascension is here and the declination is here. They call it RA and the deck. So we take these, put it in one of these programs that controls the telescope and then let's solve it. Essentially send the mount to the location and we'll start taking pictures. That's how it, the process is going to work. So I'll show you quickly the pictures that I took. And let me bring up the first picture I took. So this is the one. And that's what you're seeing. It's not much. It is basically a big smudge. It's very bright. The telescope is sitting out there, like pointing towards the bright morning time before the sun rises. You don't see much there. Uh, and also I try to change the image to reduce the brightness a little bit even to see this. Otherwise it is just, just white, right? So I'm not showing you the comet picture yet and I'll show you the excitement in a second. I was looking at this and I was quite disappointed. I was like, what is this, right? Like, where is my comet? Where is my 3A Atlas? So I uh, used a program. Uh, it is basically uh, called ASTAP. It's an astrometric stacking program. This is used mainly by the astrophotographers and uh, astronomers as well. NASA uses it. And if you take your picture and put it out there, you are going to get uh, an opportunity to figure out how to plate solve it, right? What it does is it tells you you know, all the attributes of the file, right? Here is the telescope that you used. Here is the focal length of the telescope, dimensions of the picture, stars, locations, etc. right? Once you have that, you should be able to annotate the comets and asteroids in that picture, right? So I was super excited to see this. And there you go. We are seeing 3i Atlas picture. And this is as of today is November 5th. And that's 3A Atlas picture. So this is magnitude 14. Okay, so it's very, very dim. Magnitude 7, as I said, you just see a small streak with a long exposure. But with magnitude 14, you're seeing a tiny dot. You cannot see this without at least an 8 inch telescope, right? And even I was disappointed because I took this picture back in August and I almost got the similar picture. I was like, well, it went from the sun. I hope it developed a tail and where is my tail, right? I don't want to be uh, worrying right now about this yet. But like, where is the tail? I would take pictures more and more in the next coming days. I'll show you live. And also I'll share with you on the videos. I also wanted to make sure that if I can start this process taking pictures a bit early, if it comes early, uh, we might see a longer duration of the comet moving, right? So that is one plan that I have. So I took eight pictures, right? That's like four minutes and then it was super bright. So I'm going to show you those eight pictures right now. I closed it. No, I did not close it. Okay. So 
let me show you the eight pictures that I took. So these are the eight pictures they are coming up shortly and this is the picture and you can see how bright the area is and I have to dim that area down to visual at least view right and then I compare that picture with this picture so when I look at this somewhere in the image if you take the image into four parts I'm looking at somewhere in the middle to the right. That's where the 3A atlas is. So when I zoomed in, I also looked at where this uh, picture is, where this comet is. There are like two stars here on the top. There is one star here, the third one, another one, four, and then five, right? This way. So I'm looking for that configuration in my picture. And I do know like it is right here somewhere in this area. So I was going in to see that. So there, these are the two stars. There is one dim star right here. And there is one. And this is our Comet 3i Atlas. Uh, so don't be truly disappointed. It's actually not too bad. Let me zoom in. So that's our Comet. That's what we are watching right now. Okay. So I'm moving it left or right. So that's the comet we are looking at. And then when I processed it, sorry, when I time lapsed it, the interesting stuff started happening. And I'm seeing that this comet, in fact, is trying to move to the right. You see that? It is going to the right. I'll compare this with other comet, other stars there, right? So if I zoom into this one, this is just a star and it is just twinkling. And also there is a lot of dew there and it is too bright, etc, etc. But anyway, it is doing this, right? Whereas this one is moving to the right, like kind of. I don't have a whole lot of time. All I have is a little bit of tiny time of four minutes. And that's all I could capture for within that four minutes time frame. I'll take more pictures of this comet. I do want it to see longer exposure as well. Maybe there is tail for this comet. So this is very similar to what we got from Mars. Actually, compare it to the picture from the Mars, our picture is looking slightly better. From Mars, it was 0.18 astronomical units when they took, but that camera is too tiny though. We have a huge camera and a telescope, but we are looking from 1.8 astronomical units. It's 10, 15 times distant from when the comet came close to Mars. It's a very interesting comet. Anyway, so that's pretty much what I got. So do subscribe to my channel. I'll go live in the evening time, in the morning time or early morning time. I'll show you live pictures, live shots of this comet and any other thing that is going on in the astronomy world. I also post videos of this. Thanks for watching. Clear skies.